Hello everyone, I am the shoddy guy, back from the realms of vanishing, or whatever it is you guys would like to call it. Yes, yeah, so I'm finally back with a new video, and wow, it's definitely been a big day in the world of NASCAR, and I am just as surprised as a lot of you guys would be. For those of you who are living under a rock or cannot read, Jeremy Clements, who of course shockingly won the Crash Fest Part 1 in the Xfinity series at Daytona. So through this win, that's effectively guaranteed their spot in in the chase, or the round of 12, as it is for the Xfinity series. However, when the car was sent to the R&D center for some checks, I guess you'd call it, just to make sure everything's all good, we've seen it happen quite a bit in the Cup series, and it's been mostly fine. We'll get to the issues in Cup in a moment. And, yes, it has come out, well, this morning my time, but probably night time in America, that the intake manifold was found to be with outside the rules. I have no idea what an intake manifold is. I presume it's something to do with the engine, but based off Bob Parkris' tweets. And so that's probably... So the, basically the only thing I can think of is that the engine was found to have too much power. And yes, it's drawn the air of NASCAR and their rules. And yes, the team has been given an L2 penalty. So what does this imply? For the Xfinity series, the penalties handed down to the 51 are as followed. A 75 point penalty to both the driver and the owner point standings. They've lost 10 playoff points if they do still somehow are able to make it into the playoffs. The crew chief, uh, Mark Setzer has been fined $60,000 and has been suspended for the next four races. And probably the most talked about bit, I suppose we could say, is that the win still stands. He, Jeremy will still get the win. He'll still get credited as the winner. I presume he'll still get the winner's paycheck and all that. But... The win is encumbered, or null and voided, as far as we could say. So basically, now Jeremy is no longer guaranteed a spot in the chase. He's basically back to how he was before Daytona, where, yeah, it's basically a must-win situation, because he's quite a bit back in regards to points, or even, he was a fair bit back before the penalty even hit, but now he's even further back in the points. I can't recall, I can't recall at this stage how far back he is in points now, but I did see, uh, in regards to owner points, this has really affected them, because they were around the top 20 bonus bubble. So for those of you who don't know, if you do finish in the top 20 in the owner points, it's a $60,000 bonus, I think it is. And, yeah, basically, they were right on the bubble, basically. They were, I think they were right on 20th, just, to, just ahead of the 36th team, I think it was. But, now the penalty has kicked in, they're now dropped to 24th place, and 72 points off, I believe. They've now got a fair bit of ground to work up, work on to get back in the top 20 
try and get that 60k bonus, which for a team like the Clem Clements would mean a lot, I am sure. Probably the only bit that confused me with the penalty being handed down is despite the fact that the win is encumbered and null and voided, Jeremy will still get the five playoff points for the win. If he does still somehow get into the playoffs, he's already got those five playoff points to work on. So rather than him technically being on negative 10 playoff points, he is now on negative five playoff points, which confused me because, well, you're not credited with the win. Well, you are credited with the win, but it doesn't go for your playoffs. So as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't get awarded any points for the playoffs if, yeah, if the car's been found encumbered and rules, I guess. With the out of the blue announcement this morning, like myself, a lot of people basically had two questions. Number one, why wasn't this picked up in post-race tech? And number two, why is he still allowed to be credited with the win? Well, number one, with why this wasn't picked up in post-race tech, is the engines in the Xfinity series are actually sealed. So they do not actually unseal the engines in the post tech. They do not do that in any way, shape, or form, or anything to that matter. They, I presume they just look at the bits on the outside. Yep, it's all good. Uh, yep, on your way, fast. But since the engine and actually the whole car was sent to the R&D center, that's when they are allowed to unseal these engines and have a closer look. And obviously, whilst they've done all this, they've had a look, proper look, and yeah, that's when the L2 breach has been found. Which, most terms, is a bit of a bummer, but, oh well, it happens, I guess. So, the second question would be, why is he allowed to keep the win? Well, our lovely friend Bob Parkris, again, has once again come to the rescue. And yes, he even actually sent through the rules. Or a person tried to send a screenshot or picture of the said rules to Bob Parkris. And part of the rules had said that for L2 penalties, it can apply to a disqualification, or will apply to it for a disqualification. However, Bob was able to correct the user and basically set it straight as for why this has happened. It's because they actually cannot apply disqualifications for an R&D, or in the R&D, in the R&D center. They can only apply disqualifications at the at the racetrack or in post race tech. After that, they cannot disqualify the car from the race. They can apply the points penalty, as they've done, but they cannot disqualify the driver. Which is something that we've seen them do in the past. They've when Brad Keselowski got his L2 penalty at after Atlanta. And M Michael McDowell got his L2 penalty at Pocono. And actually, Michael McDowell's is actually a little bit worse because he'd actually got a stage point in that race. But he was allowed to keep that stage point and all his... I presume the winnings, he got to keep his points. And he kind of... Whilst they got deducted the points, he was still allowed to keep the points from that race. And if you remember, that was the race where Toyota drivers Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch got their points taken out because they were disqualified in the race. Which, of course, as you remember, Denny Hamlin was not very happy about. But, end of the day, that's... As I said, that's kind of just how the rules have been transpired. Now that 
got the facts out of the way. Guess I'll give my personal view as to how I believe this has all transpired. So firstly, for Jeremy Clements. This is an absolute shame for them. Imagine what a playoff berth would do for them. Having the credibility of winning at the crown jewel, or one of the crown jewels of NASCAR. One of the biggest events on the calendar. And being able to negotiate all those wrecks to being able to finally win at Daytona. And then to find out a few days later, yeah, actually, well, you do get to keep the win, but yeah, outside of that, do you get nothing? It sucks. But at the end of the day, I guess that's racing course there are still chances for them to win they've still got the three races but probably their best chance if and that's a very slim chance would be bristol which is the final race before the xfinity playoffs start that's probably their best chance to get in but i unfortunately wouldn't hold out hope and unfortunately i see them missing out on the playoffs now to go back a little bit for the major fan backlash, I guess we'd say, is the driver who, of course, finished second in that race. Timmy Hill, who, of course, drives NBM Motorsports for Carl Long. And, of course, people are saying, yeah, Timmy Hill should be awarded the win. Timmy Hill, yeah, Timmy Hill should be awarded the win. Timmy Hill's the winner. Da 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 da, etc. etc. Unfortunately, at, like I said, NASCAR has precedence of letting the penalized driver keep his points. Like I said, with the case of Michael McDowell, with the case of Brad Keselowski. And so, yeah, it was pretty obvious that they weren't going to take away the win from Jeremy Clements. They were going to let him keep the win. But, yeah, it just wasn't going to go towards the playoffs. I personally feel like that if it was a driver like Noah Gregson or AJ Allmendinger, who finished third, I believe, if they were the car who finished second, I personally do not feel like there would be as much of a talking point. It would be, up. Uh, Yep, oh well. It was still cool to see Jeremy Clements win. It was still good to see that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll still let him have the win because AJ Elmending has already won God knows how many times this season. Noah Gregson has done the same as well. So, we'll still let him have the win. But, yeah, I, it's just a shame he doesn't get used in the playoffs. Because Timmy Hill finished in second who's a very popular driver, might I add, and a very popular underdog driver. I personally quite like him as well. I don't mind him as a driver. He seems like if he had a chance in bigger equipment, he would absolutely do well. But because it was Timmy who finished second, people were like, oh, no, 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 we must disqualify him. We need to disqualify him. We need to disqualify Jeremy. We need to give Timmy the hill. Timmy Hill the win. Timmy Hill's the real winner. Timmy earned it. Da 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 da, etc. etc. And yeah. Timmy Hill actually even posted a little bit of a joke on it on his Twitter with a cucumber emoji, which implies the encumbered, as I mentioned, because Jeremy's win was encumbered, as I said. And Whilst, of course, it would have been cool to see Timmy, w Timmy win. Is that the really the way that we'd want to see Timmy Hill win his first race? Wouldn't we all want to see him earn it properly on the track without having another driver get DQ'd or any form of that? Wouldn't it be better for us to see Timmy Hill win his first race on merit? 
not through another team's misfortune. Of course, I believe this Jeremy Clements Racing will be allowed to do a an appeal, which I would not be surprised if they do, because they got nothing to lose. So I can see them appealing. I don't see it succeeding, but I can see them at least trying. And unfortunately, was a bit sad and a bit awkward in all this is a few hours before um, the penalty was announced, Jeremy Clements announced that he was going to be on Sirius XM radio. I do not believe that ended up happening. I don't watch the radio, but or what listen to the radio or watch the station, so I doubt it had happened. So, yeah, as I said. I presume they're going to appeal because they got nothing to lose. And, yeah, that's about it. So, that's pretty much my view of the Jeremy Clements L2 penalty and what has transpired. Uh, I've probably missed a little bit, but unfortunately my phone's about to run out of, uh, run out of space, so I've kind of got to hurry this up. So, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the shoddy guy, hk1718. Thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.